Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays, and somebody asked me to do a video, kind of a beginner's guide. Now, we've already built a beginner's guide that goes through each particular airframe, and I kind of stand by that a lot of what I talked about there for tactics and how to fly those aircraft still remains. But something that changed drastically from that beginner's guide video till now is that all of the equipment has changed drastically and they've also changed some of the mechanics when it comes to the camouflage because now it actually does something. So figure we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about the specialization system now that I've had some time to actually be in it and see how it works. And then we'll even take a little bit of time to talk about the tokens or tickets as I oftentimes call them because it looks like a ticket stub. But anyways, I digress. Let's start out with looking at eliting versus specializing an airframe. So when you have your airframe up, you can see in the top right hand corner here, you can see where your status is progressing from the stock configuration up to the elite status. By clicking on this bar anywhere, you'll end up pulling up this bar. Basically, when you get the airframe, you're going to be in stock configuration. And until you have gone through your upgrade tree and unlocked all of the modules, spent all the experience, you won't be into the elite status. The elite status doesn't do much for you with the exception that when you're in elite status, you now can convert XP off of the airframe if you so choose, or you can actually start accelerating crew training. So if you decided, hey, I only want to make it to the Su-9, I don't want to move on to the I-211, that's fine. You can decide to start accelerating your crew training now and you don't need to burn the experience on the next aircraft. I don't quite understand why they did this. It's not the way any of the other wargaming games work. Usually you have to unlock the next vehicle in order to be able to go into elite status, but World of Warplanes doesn't fit a lot of normal conventions when it comes to the way wargaming does its products. So we are now working towards specialist. Once you have achieved elite status, you unlock the oper the ability to go through the sets of missions down at the bottom here and try to get yourself to specialist configuration. For this particular aircraft, we need to earn personal points by destroying enemy aircraft. The key here is enemy aircraft. It doesn't just say aircraft. When they say enemy aircraft, they mean, no kidding, red players, not air defense aircraft. So you have to kill what is essentially the enemy players, right? Even if they are bots. Then at the bottom here is air defense aircraft or AA guns. So we can kill air defense aircraft here and we can also kill AA guns. So that's good because this aircraft can actually equip some bombs. So when I drop my bombs, I'll probably be dropping them on AA sites. We have to get both of these satisfied in order for us to get specialist configuration. Now there is a way to skip this using the token system and you'll see here that it's going to take 90 tokens to skip both of these missions in order for me to unlock the ability to purchase specialist. There is a discount you can get by completing portions of these objectives. If I complete half of the primary task <clears throat> up at the top, which is half of that 48,600, if I get 24,300, it will discount the overall price by 36 tokens. For the AA defense, if I, I have to complete that in full and get all 50 AA guns or air defense aircraft killed over any number of missions, then I will be able to get a nine token discount. But if you go all the way through and you complete both of these to completion, like completely done, you won't need to spend any tokens at all. So you can save them. And I suggest that you do that unless there's certain inst instances where you really want to pl plus it up really quick. Now this unlocks the opportunity to purchase the specialist configuration and you see here at the bottom it is quite a hefty cost for a tier 8 of 750,000 silver. You have to 
spend that money in order to do this. So be prepared that even though you might have spent your tokens, you're not done, they're still going to take even more money from you. And you're going to have to spend even more if you want to maximize what Specialist gives you. So what does Specialist even give you? Mostly it's going to come in the equipment tree. You'll see here on the equipment tree that we have a couple of sections that have lock icons on them. So underneath the uh, forward firing weapon, underneath the airframe, and underneath the outboard weapons. These are unlocked once you reach specialist. This is your incentive right here. If you unlock specialist, we'll be able to equip these additional mounts. Now, this kind of brings me slightly into equipment because you'll see here that underneath equipment, we have an improved gyroscopic sight. Improved meaning that we put some type of effort into upgrading this. So just for the sake of discussion, we're going to go ahead and throw in a piece of equipment here. I'm going to throw in lightweight wing frame. First thing you'll notice is that un underneath this list here, these are on other aircraft, but there's an exclamation point here. If we read all the way at the bottom here, it says the equipment is mounted on an aircraft that has not been upgraded to specialist configuration. Its performance is reduced. And you can see towards the middle underneath the negatives underneath aircraft HP, this negative bonus characteristics inactive. So when you upgrade one of these pieces of equipment, you will roll a bonus characteristic. Since this has been upgraded to ultimate, there are three available bonus characteristics, but none of them are active because if I were to put them on this airframe, which isn't specialist yet, we will not be utilizing any of the bonuses, any of them. So we don't want to do that. The same thing goes for advanced. You can't even use advanced on a stock or an elite aircraft without suffering a loss of bonus characteristics. That's losing both bonus characteristics. Now let's go ahead and look back at the gyroscopic site real quick. You see here that its bonus characteristic is active because it's been upgraded once. If I were to upgrade this another time, this plus 5% chance of inflicting critical damage will be lost until I can get this to specialist configuration. So don't speed just because you can continue to upgrade these, don't upgrade them unless your aircraft is specialized. But like I said, once you are specialized, you're going to be buying two more pieces of equipment and you're also going to be spending a lot of the components that go into that. Okay, so that's specialist configuration. Now let's go ahead and go through the process of buying a piece of equipment. So I am going to purchase a new one since all of these are already being utilized on other airframes that I have. We're going to go with stock lightweight wing frame because I would like to put a little bit of maneuverability into this platform. And you'll see here that we're in stock lightweight wing frame. There is a bonus to aircraft maneuverability, 5% for roll, 1% for maneuverability and turning increase. However, we are sacrificing overall aircraft HP and also a 3% chance is increased to the wings chance for getting critical damage. Okay. So there's going to be a negative associated with any type of piece of equipment you put on, but it's going to be less than what you're gaining overall. Now, if we go ahead and hit enhance, you will see that we will increase the amount of roll and turn, but we'll also increase the loss of hit points and the chance of getting critical damage to our wings. So there is going to be a loss, but at the bottom, it says additional char bonus characteristics. So we'll roll for a bonus characteristic. And if I hover over it, it'll tell me what I can get. We can get plus three to wing resistance to critical damage, which is going to help offset some of the loss we have up top. Or we can roll to get even more ability and roll maneuverability, which is nice to have because that's kind of what this is giving us with a lightweight wing frame. At the very bottom, you see it says enhancement price. The enhancement price is going to take materials these materials are unlocked based on battles and you will get them for winning a battle. It is important that you note that it is from winning a battle. A loss will result in no 
increase in materials. It will also cost 50 silver. You can see here we have plenty of these components sitting in our storage, so we are going to go ahead and hit the enhance button and see what the bonus characteristic gives us. It looks like it just gave us plus three to wing resistance to critical damage. So that 4.5 up at the top here for wing resistance to critical damage being a negative, we are going to increase our resistance by 3%, which means that we are only at a 1.5. So it's a negligible loss. Now there is an option here inside of improved lightweight wing, wing frame to go ahead and calibrate. And you see that there's a sliding scale from 200 all the way up to 285. I'm going to do this once, but I don't advocate doing it. I'm just showing you what happens. When you go to calibrate a piece of equipment, it's going to take some of your uh, available materials in order to do this role as well as some of your credits and it is a random result and you'll see here it's very much like gambling as it wobbles back and forth and can give us a lot or it could give us nothing and if we try to go ahead and re-roll this you'll note that there's a chance for it to go negative so I don't advocate doing this because once you hit specialist and you upgrade this again your scale you'll immediately jump up to to 300 from 200. So why are we spending money and valuable equipment now, or materials, in order to upgrade this piece of equipment? What I do advocate, however, is if there is an airframe that you really enjoy and you want to maximize, we'll go ahead and take a look at my J8M. And you'll see that these ultimate pieces of equipment that I have here I have re-rolled and I've gotten them to 428, 430, 436. So I have rolled these once they've already been upgraded and you'll see that they jump to 400. The scale changes entirely. So I don't advocate calibrating any piece of equipment that's only in the approved category or even in the advanced. Only role for items and calibration when they're already upgraded to ultimate otherwise you're just kind of wasting your time and effort underneath so we looked at this in, underneath this section for airframe we use the lightweight wing frame but there are other options there's reinforced skin and the reinforced skin will give you uh, increased resistance to critical damage but you'll lose some speed characteristics and you can see here it's going to be uh, maximum speed with boost and cruise speed you'll lose one percent it's a negligible amount but it's still there and it's something i think you'll notice if you are trying to operate at with a high speed aircraft that you're going to be diminishing its overall speed but if you are building kind of a tankier aircraft or one that can't afford to lose its tail at low altitude this is a totally viable option same thing goes here for aircraft um for airframe reinforcement, the reinforced airframe, this will increase the overall hit points of the aircraft but sacrifice its roll capability. We already saw lightweight wing frame. Polished skin is going to lose maneuverability but increase the aircraft overall speed. And there are other things that can roll as random traits as well, which you can see in the tree when you go ahead and hit enhance. For the cockpit, there's only two options, cockpit armor and you have a sight of some kind depending on what tier group you're in. Uh, the cockpit is going to decrease the amount of uh, critical damage that you'll be taking with your crew. So this will keep your gunners up, this will keep your pilot up. However, you'll lose some on the maneuverability and the sight will increase the accuracy of the guns, but also increase the chance for the pilot to take an injury. Underneath engines, we're gonna use operated engine, but you have the chance here for the armor protection, engine armor protection to increase the resistance damage while decreasing the overall speed of the aircraft. And then we have the combined injection boost system. I only advocate using this if you have an aircraft that already has a very big boost pool, because then you're maximizing what you're getting from that boost if you're looking for more instantaneous speed or acceleration. Heavies usually benefit a lot from using the gas turbine or 
injection system here. This will increase your maneuverability at the sacrifice of an increased chance to lose your engine, okay? So if you're using an aircraft that likes to get a little bit more turning capability, this is a popular choice. And then the uprated engine, the uprated engine I think is a really good option for aircraft that aren't going to have a lot of boost available but want to get some type of an engine power capability boost and this is a very good option in fact we are going to be using the uprated engine however not right now because we're a little bit shy on credits the uprated engine is going to increase our acceleration without boost and our cruise speed so this will allow your aircraft to be able to hold speeds at higher altitudes as well as hold your higher speeds after you've released the boost button but you do increase your chance of fire, which is why I do advocate firefighter on almost all of my aircraft setups for the pilot skills. There are options for the turrets as well as the outboard weapon systems. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the RB-17. Some of these change as you go through tiers, but the basic premise still applies. There's some type of a turret armor protection. It's gonna increase the resistance of the gunner to take damage, but it's going to decrease the overall aircraft speed. And then you have the gun laying drive, which is usually used for when you tend not to sit in the gunner seat by hitting the T button and hanging out in the gunner spot. Uh, if you're not sitting in the gunner spot and you're just letting the gunner do his own thing, this will give a benefit to that. It increases the aiming speed, so the faster those guns get on target and start uh, firing on the enemy, and but it does sacrifice aircraft maneuverability. <clears throat> For the turret gun sight, this is going to increase the range when you're in manual mode, when you are sitting in the turret. So I really see these two right here as being, depending on your play style, if you tend to sit in the gun turret, which I do advocate because you have a higher chance of getting critical damage and you can get those guns firing quicker, this is going to be your best bet. However, if you tend to just let the gunners work on their own, using the gun laying drive is going to be your best bet. Uh, but you're going to increase your gunner's chance for injury when you're using this turret gun sight. For consumables, there's a few blocks here. We'll start on outboard weapons since we do have this aircraft up. I do not advocate using premium consumables. I've said this on many occasions, but I don't see any reason to spend valuable gold here when you could be spending it on things that are going to stay with the aircraft longer. You're literally burning up gold at this point because every time you go into a battle, you're losing it. And it's quite literally a consumable. Another option here it's going to be underneath the turret. Uh, we don't have it unlocked because we don't have specialist on this airframe, but what this is going to be is the ability to put in specialized ammo, like universal ammo. There we go. So we can put in universal ammo or we can put in special ammo for gun turret, which increases uh, critical damage. But again, I'm not burning gold, so we're not gonna waste the time. The other one is going to be the ammo for the forward firing guns. It may be tempting to put incendiary ammunition onto your ground attackers so we can start buildings on fire, but again, I just use universal because it only uses silver. It does cost silver per battle and ups your cost per battle to <clears throat> refit your airframe, but I do think it's a better option than using any of the premium choices. For the engine, I usually will go with the manual restart because it'll get your engines back up and running and if you're not moving, you're dying most of the time. So it's a great bet. Uh, and then the coolant here will start a regeneration period. I can be used up to five times per battle and it will last for 10 seconds and it will increase the rate at which you get your boost back. I like using this if I have two slots available. However, there is also an option to use this improved mix control, which will increase the overall thrust and airspeed by 2%. So this will allow you to be able to maintain an overall increased engine performance, although it's not going to be an instantaneous return like having a lot of boost available would be. 
underneath wing frame. There's a few options here. Uh, I like to go with emergency control systems because if my tail's shot out, I can't maneuver, and then I'm dead. So this is a very popular choice. You also have pneumatic control assist here, which when you hit this for 10 seconds, you will get increased maneuverability performance from your aircraft. This is good for dogfighters when they're in a turning fight with an equal aircraft. Like if I was in my Yak-15 and it was against another Yak-15, I could hit this pneumatic control assist in order to give me an edge in that turning fight so that way I could get around on him before he could get on me. And then exhaust bleed. Oh, didn't mean to activate it. Uh, this decreases your chance of fire for the duration of the battle. By 20%. So you equip this and it just lowers your chance for fire. So that's a good option as well for those of you who are worried about your aircraft lighten up or you notice that it tends to be starting on fire a lot. Underneath pilot, uh, there's two options here really. You have the first aid dressing or you have fire extinguisher. This is one of the reasons I like firefighter skill because if you have firefighter skill, then all you have to do is make a hard turn and you'll extinguish the fire and then you can still use the first aid dressing it's it's available for on your aircraft that's why i prefer this setup if you don't have firefighter on your aircraft and you aren't taking that um, reduced fire consumable with the exhaust bleed inerting system uh, you almost have to take a fire extinguisher otherwise you're going to risk the chance of burning out your aircraft a lot of people don't like getting lit on fire and staying on fire so uh, i advocate putting on firefighter and then you can put on the first aid dressing and there's no loss but that's a preference thing all right let's talk about camouflage and paint real quick so we got a new airframe here there are several options for paint you notice that there's four seasons or three seasons and then marine each one of these has certain bonuses depending on the maps that they that they have so if we wanted to maximize the bonus of 20 percent concealment plus 10 percent tolerance to aa damage and five percent tolerance to uh, damage from tail gunners we would have to equip this paint job but then when we're operating in a winter we'll have to equip this paint job and if we're on a desert we'll have to equip this paint job and marine will require this paint job and they they all look really cool and they're completely different paint jobs however is it worth spending essentially four times the cost when what i could do is i could go with this relatively bland paint job and it's only giving me 10 percent concealment and a five percent tolerance to aa guns but it's still giving me something right it's not nothing uh you are having what you're getting and you're losing this resistance to from gunners however is it worth four times the cost maybe if this was a premium aircraft i flew a lot and i was keeping it around i might spend some gold and keep that around but in this case that's not what i'm going to do here when it comes to the decoration for like the nose you'll see right here this will give me bonus crew experience it'll give me bonus crew experience by three percent there aren't many opportunities to get nose paints for free, so as a result, we're gonna go ahead and slap this on here just because I think it makes it look cooler with the yellow tail, and it gives me 3% bonus to the crew experience. If you've been playing this game for any period of time, they have a lot of events that will end up giving you this emblem. The emblems give you a bonus of 2% to the crew experience. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom of my list, you can see these are the ones that came from the Christmas event or the holiday event. Uh, you also get one for getting to elite status in this particular airframe. So I can throw my elite emblem on here. And this will allow me to be able to get that 2% bonus, just like I could for the ones above that I'd have to pay for, except these have an infinity symbol underneath them, which means that this is unlocked forever. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap this on here. And now I'm getting some minor benefits for this aircraft and we should be good to go. Tokens. So the first thing you should note when it comes to tokens 
is that over here underneath daily missions, you can see that there's three different sets here. They're of different difficulty strings, okay? So this first one is going to give me one token reward for satisfying the requirements listed here in each tier group, one to four, five to seven, eight to 10. You have to have an aircraft in each one of these tier groups in order to complete these missions. And sometimes they're gonna require a particular aircraft type. If it says damage to ground targets, you're probably gonna to want to have a bomber or a ground attacker at each one of these tiers, or at the very least a multi-role platform that's known for having some air to ground ordinance. And then in increasing difficulty, we have the medium difficulty, which is going to give us four tokens. And then at the highest difficulty, it's going to be 10 tokens. You can complete all three of these, each one of these sets of missions once per day. That's why they're called daily missions. However, if you don't complete them during that day, it's fine. You have as much time as you need. Now, if you find that you're having a really tough time satisfying these requirements, like I don't have a ground attacker and this thing wants me to kill ground targets, once per day, you can re-roll one of these sets of daily missions. You can replace it once per day for only one of them. So don't get click happy and accidentally do what I was about to do to show you and replace one of these when I haven't, when I know that I can do this, right? This isn't, this isn't going to be too difficult. And if there was one I was going to take the time to replace, it probably would be the 10 token one opposed to the one or four, because the one or four is going to be relatively easy to satisfy. There is another way to achieve tokens as well. Uh, I've had this open for a while. Maybe I can find a mission where we got some tokens. There we go. You get tokens for getting medals or getting achievements. So I got a token for getting the McGuire medal, the Mersai medal, for getting the Winged Legend, and the McCampbell medal. See each one of these? It says received one token. You only get one token per day for each one of these achievements. There are multiple achievements available, but this shows you what achievements are. This shows you that I've gotten these four, but if we go to the profile, it might take a second for this to load. I can show you all the available achievements that there are. Come on now, there we go. So underneath the Achievements, we've got the Epic Achievements, we've got the Mersai, the McCampbell, the Lang Medal, the Galubev, the Gabreski, Akamatsu, Lambert, Maguire, Efimov, Doolittle, and Kazuda. Now, I may have been butchering all of those, but those are the ones right here that would give you tokens. You can also get tokens from an ace. You can get it from winged legend, <clears throat> thunder, and that's about it. You could see that underneath when I went over ace, it actually showed me reward for the first medal of the day. So they even tell you here inside of this section underneath achievements. So you can also get them for unlocking each one of these blocks for these tier decorations, as you can see right here. Hopefully that helps some of you guys that are working towards the tokens. But what can tokens even be used for? Well, if you're working towards the vampire or the XP55, or is it XF55? I'm not sure. Anyways, either of those two airframes, you're going to note that those two airframes are going to have a series of missions for, for that aircraft and the Vampire to try and get through these blocks. I think there's 10 steps inside of the Vampire and seven in the XP-55. Yeah, it is XP. Uh, it was... When you hit the last step, usually, or the last stage of a step, you're going to find that there's usually a very difficult 
a medal you need to get or an achievement. Uh, I saved my tokens up to spend on those in order to skip those steps, and it allows you to be able to progress down those lines much quicker. For those of you who are working for the BVP203, you'll note that the BVP203, you need to unlock a certain time gate to allow you to be able to try and complete all of those objectives, and I think you get a four-day period to try and get through all those steps. Now, if you hit the end of those four days and you're like, oh no, I needed more time, you can spend a few more tokens to increase the amount of time available on that. So those are a few things tokens are usually spent on. Special event aircraft, skipping some missions, some steps, and unlocking those missions as well. Uh, but you also have the option here of spending them to get a 30 days of premium account or getting a slot in the hangar. Another thing tokens are spent on was that specialization like we talked about, and it can also be used to mount and demount pieces of equipment. If you try and demount any piece of equipment that has been enhanced, anywhere from improved all the way, all, all the way up to ultimate, if I try to demount this, you'll note that it will cost one token. So that is something to bear in mind that once you've decided, yes, I want to keep this piece of equipment on the airframe and I am going to enhance it, if you ever want to take it off without destroying it, I don't even think you can take it off. I don't even think they give you an option. You're going to have to spend a token to remove it. So just be really sure when you equip your aircraft that that's what you want to do. Anyways, I think that pretty much hits the highlights of the major changes I've noted since the beginner's guide that I pushed out. So hopefully this helps some of you guys, and I hope to catch you on the next one.